Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Jnana Varthini, FDB based weekly knowledge session. We all know cybercrime is a criminal activity that either targets or uses a computer. And in this digital era, we hear about hacking, malware, ransomware, phishing. Cybercrime seems to be something anyone can fall victim to at any time, individuals, businesses, or even governments. Even more alarming because we don't see it coming, we only know when it hits. Today, our speaker, Mr. Karthikeyan, is going to speak about cyber crimes and how anyone can be a victim. Mr. Karthikeyan is a renowned cyber law expert, a specialist in intellectual property law, cyber law, and other technology laws. He has completed the prestigious course in international practice in intellectual property law offered by the International Bar Association in London. He successfully excelled in the qualifying bar exam of England and Wales. He is a certified cyber crime investigator and certified cyber forensic analyst. He's a regular speaker in Tamil Nadu Police Academy and Tamil Nadu State Judicial Academy on uh, cyber laws. Eager to listen to your views, Mr. Karthikeyan. Welcome and over to you. Thank you, ma'am. It's a pleasure meeting you all on this wonderful evening. I sincerely thank uh, Navi sir and the members of every PPI for providing me this opportunity. So today we are here to discuss on various aspects of cyber crimes. So when I say cyber crimes, cyber crime may happen or may not happen, but we are surrounded by digital gadgets. So according, according to me, slowly but surely we are moving to the next level of civilization. You now we call ourselves as a civilized society. On what basis we call ourselves as a civilized society is nothing but our forefathers have taught us a set of empirical codes, the do's and don'ts the things that you need to follow based on the instructions given by our forefathers. So accordingly, we call ourselves as civilized societies. But is, this is happening in the real world. But when, when we are moving to the virtual world, we don't have any restrictions. We don't follow any do's and don'ts. So this is the issue where the cyber crimes pops up. See, there's no doubt we are surrounded by digital gadgets, such as, you know, like computers, laptops, smartphones, smartwatches, and so many smart gadgets. But are we smart enough to handle those gadgets? So that's the question here. See, for example, uh, everyone used to purchase a mobile phone, you know, mobile phone ranges from, you know, 20,000 to 1.5 lakhs because of my recent purchase of a mobile phone cost me more than a lakh. But are we really purchasing a mobile application? Because we know that we are spending for the instrument alone. Are we spending on the applications? How many of you spend money on purchasing an application? This is my question. So let it be an interactive session. If you have any more doubts or clarifications, let us discuss on this. So my question is, how many of you had purchased the mobile application? Have you ever thought why this mobile application is offered at free of cost? And why we are using this applications, expensive, expensive applications at free of cost? You all must be knowing that in, I don't know, like uh, nearly in 2014, uh, WhatsApp was purchased by a company called Facebook. Now it is called Meta. They spent nearly $20 billion to purchase an application. It's called WhatsApp. Just for an application, they spend nearly $20 billion. After spending $20 billion, they are giving this application at free of cost. They never charge for you know, uh, sending any, any text messages or videos, photographs, or making a phone calls, even video calls. We don't pay a single penny to them. Then how do they make money? You know, uh, you see, the, the other thing is you can't even see any, any uh, advertisements or any, you know, uh, marketing strategies in WhatsApp, then how do they make revenue? Have you ever thought of it? The answer is so simple, you know, like uh, while installing an application, there's an agreement signed between you and the mobile application developer. My humble question is, how many of you have read that application before installing the particular application? You know, read the agreement. The name of the agreement is called the end user license agreement. Once you click, I agree, or yes, or allow, it is known as a contract. It is signed by you. It is called click crap contract. So it is a contract entered between the end user and the mobile application developer. If you could read this application, the end user license agreement, before you know installing a particular app, you'll get to know what is happening around us. See, if you could be able to read now, you can find a particular clause in all these applications, all these mobile applications. If you want to install this mobile application into your mobile phone, you will access your contacts, you will access your mobile phone gallery, you will make use of the photographs and videos stored into your mobile gallery will access your cameras, will take photographs and videos using your mobile phone cameras, will access your mics, will listen to all your conversations. Conversations in the, in the sense, it is not that when you make a call to someone and those conversations are listened, even by keeping your mobile phone aside and speaking to your friend who is sitting next to you, even these conversations will be listened by your mobile phone. That is the power of the mobile phone. We are speaking about 
lot of things we are speaking about you know artificial intelligence you know machine learning and uh, uh, even uh, right now we are discussing about you know virtual reality augmented reality mixed reality metaverse all these technologies have you ever experienced these technologies if you want to experience it's so simple just take your mobile phone that's it because it has a machine learning it has an artificial artificial intelligence everything so we are under the impression we are purchasing we are spending money to purchase this mobile mobile phones but it is not so the mobile phone manufacturers want to send this mobile phone to you to your house or in your pocket accordingly they charge you only for the instrument not for the business which they are getting out of you because each and every activity that you do you know, whatever you discuss whatever you do whatever you express even our expressions are captured you know like uh, you must be using uh, instagrams and uh, uh, youtube uh, applications but nowadays like uh, 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 no one you know clicks likes or pass a comment on either facebook or instagram or twitter just we will look at it and accordingly we will you know read some contents or listen to videos uh, then we'll move on to the next content but the camera in front of your mobile phone watches your expression so in what way you are expressing to a particular video if you you know if you smile at a particular video then this smile will be captured and identical or similar type of video will be run through a, after a particular time point of time and if you discuss something those subjects will be reflected in your youtube applications or any other applications that you access have you ever thought why this is happening even you know uh, you know the uh, uh, e-commerce chains such as you know amazon flipkart works on the same way if you want to discuss something on that i look you at their application will be listening to all your conversations whatever the conversations you discuss they pull out the keywords from the conversation those keywords should be a commercial keywords and based on that they will push this commercial keywords to the particular vendors and particular vendor advertisements will be you know pushed to your mobile phone this is how it operates we need to understand because we discuss a lot about you know uh, cyber crimes and you know data theft and other stuff but what is happening around us we need to understand we are living in a virtual world as i said earlier slowly but surely we are moving to the next level of civilization that is called cyber civilization so the, we need to learn or we need to you know set up the do's and don'ts it's it's a set of empirical codes which we need to set up right now it is high time for us because why i'm saying high time is that we you know in the middle aged you know maybe in the age of you know 40 50 60 we know both the worlds that the normal world and the virtual world because we have seen the world without the internet and we are seeing the world with the internet so we are called cyber migrants we know the difference between the real world as well as the virtual world we would be able to distinguish between the pros and cons in both the worlds but however kids born after 2000 are called cyber natives right from their birth they they could able to see mobile phones internet tablets and lot more things wherever they go only technology is there so it is a high time for us to, to set a empirical codes we need to give this to the next generation otherwise otherwise the next generation will be just cyber slaves not users netizens not a user they will be cyber slaves and they will be governed by this mobile applications or whatever the technology that comes in future because every company is betting on us because what i want to say is if you get something as free of cost then you are the saleable product you are the saleable commodity you need to understand that when when you are getting something as free of cost then you are a saleable commodity i think a lot last week you know a couple of days back up you would have heard a new application called threads released by meta uh, have you ever i ever thought like what it is and how does it works and how they could able to achieve you know 10 million users within a span of 7 hours uh, you know like it's, it's so simple because meta is a very big company they are you know they have multiple social media platforms you know such as you know facebook you know instagram and right now it's threads because each and every uh, social media programs has a different set of audience in it for example uh if you want to you know concentrate on you know youngsters if you want to project some product or services to youngsters facebook has a product called instagram if you want to concentrate or project some you know uh, goods or services to a middle aged man then facebook has a product called uh, sorry meta has a product called facebook and the, the only gap which they had is they don't have a platform for a free speech similar to twitter but recently recently i think i you know uh six seven months back uh, elon musk had bought twitter in uh, october 2022 after that there were many policy changes and because of this policy changes uh, people using you know uh, twitter want to you know go out of it and they are looking they were hunting for new platforms and even jack darcy as you know the founder of twitter has introduced new platform that's called blue sky and even he couldn't able to achieve that but whereas you know mark zuckerberg could able to achieve the same the difference is 
already he has a platform already he has a user so through instagram and facebook so that is the reason he introduced threads which is a free speech uh, free speech uh, platform where more users will be using those platforms because it is similar to twitter if you could see able to see threads it will be similar to twitter because what are the features you are looking at twitter it will be similarly available in threads and moreover the strategy which they have adopted to get more users is if you want to you know log into uh, you know uh, threads you don't need to create a separate account if you have an instagram account through the instagram account directly you can reach threads so by that uh, definitely you know you are you, you can get more number of users and moreover if you want to delete threads or you want to get out of threads your instagram account will be simultaneously deleted this is the strategy which they have adopted right now or that is the reason they could able to achieve the number of users within a short span of time and moreover right now mark zuckerberg or the meta can bet to any advertisers in the world they say if you want to if you have a project we have a set of users to project we have a, you know a facebook for middle aged person you know uh, instagram with for uh, you know you know youngsters and you know for uh, free speech uh, grown ups we have uh, uh, threads so he is doing business with our accounts our account in the sense it's is it's his own product and we are just using his product we are under the impression he is doing service for us it is not so actually he is making business out of us we need to understand that is the reason you know i want to explain certain things to you on this aspect because these social networking companies are just social networking companies not social service companies so don't believe or trust any social media you know whatever it may be how fantasy it may be don't adopt it and this you know the company meta is known for that you know similar to meta there are a lot of other companies meta previously you know if you if you could see uh, uh instagram stories instagram stories was adopt, adopted by originally it was adopted by uh, snapchat snapchat stories and subsequently they copied and they are successful in it and subsequently tiktok you must be you know aware of tiktok tiktok was a short time video 30 seconds video they adopted it they have used it in instagram and it is called instagram reels and they are successful in it so they are strongly betting on us in fact i don't know how many of you are aware of that cambridge analytica case way back in 2016 what has happened to us presidential election so there was a company involved in you know uh, us presidential election the name of the company is cambridge analytica if you could able to visit the website of cambridge analytica it says that like, we have conducted elections in 40 different countries even now it is there you can have a question how can a private company conduct a election even if assuming for a moment if a could a private company could able to conduct a election how can they conduct a election in 40 different countries so this is the question raised in the minds of fbi officers federal bureau of investigation so what they have done is they have summoned the uh, key people of uh, cambridge analytica and they have started interrogation with them so after interrogating they get, they got to know that you know they they the mesmerized people it's called you know marketing in subconscious mind campaigning in subconscious mind not direct campaigning through posters or you know voice overs it's marketing in subconscious mind without the knowing of the without knowing what's happening around us they will inject or plant a seed in our brain so that we will be voting for a particular party this is the duty of cambridge analytica so the the fbi has raised another question so how you got uh, how did you got the source of these users they simply said we have signed an mou with facebook at the time the name of the company was facebook and in 2021 december it has been changed from facebook to meta at the time they have appointed out a company called facebook so uh, the facebook uh, you know founder as well as ceo mark zuckerberg was zuckerberg was summoned by us senators both senators and congressmen raised a questions they raised a question several questions were raised against them how can you you know share our citizens details with third parties because cambridge analytica is a company based out of uh, uk it is based in uk the the first question raised by the uh, us senators and congressmen were that how can you do this because the people are trusting you and they're giving the data to you how can you share this data with a third party company such as cambridge analytica and they are doing election campaign they are doing you know marketing in subconscious mind how can you do that mark zuckerberg simply answered that no we have not ditched any of our customers everything was explained in the agreement after reading the agreements in 22 our clients are signed up that's our customers are signed up so we have never you know uh, suppressed any material from our customers everything was expressed even now it is available in there no website if you could read their agreement it is simply mentioned we'll share this information with third parties even companies like cambridge well similar to that they have signed mo with hundreds of other companies as well so why i want to say this this is what happening we are under the impression we are doing certain things based on our own you know wish but it is not so the gadgets surrounded by us 
are driving us. They are handling us. We are not handling the smart gadgets. The smart gadgets, why we call it as smart gadgets, they are smart enough to handle us. They are governing us. We need to understand. They are governing us literally. For example, uh, uh, assuming for a moment, on a Sunday, uh, all the family members are sitting together. And uh, you know we were discussing that uh, we, should, we can't we go out, we can go out for a lunch or we can go out for a dinner. Just we can discuss. This discussions will be captured by your mobile phone. And within a few minutes, less than 20 minutes, you can see an advertisement in Swiggy or Zometo. You know, a bucket biryani worth of uh, is offered at 50 percentage cost. And you can get, uh, you know, some KFC chicken at 50 percentage. So immediately our thought process will change. And, you know, instead of going out, why can't we order a bucket biryani and KFC chicken and we can eat it together inside a house? So this data is influenced to make a decision. So again, here we are governed by this application because we have a, we have a different idea of, you know, what we need to do on a particular Sunday. But of course, this mobile application has, you know, turned us in such a way that we need to follow their instructions. So this is the world we are living in and we need to understand that. Every mobile application does the same thing. Mobile applications are offered at free of cost, but it is not, you know, working at free of cost. It is making each and every second, it is making money out of us. We need to understand that. And then, this is, as I said earlier, this is the high time to govern the next generation because we can see a lot of things happening for the next generation, a lot of companies bidding on next generation. That is the reason interoperability, interoperability is, you know, working across the globe. You know, like, uh, you know, companies can uh, use the data and they can share the data between the companies. For example, uh, if you could purchase some products in uh, Flipkart, Flipkart will be giving you uh, coins. And those coins can be utilized only if you purchase another product in the same website, Flipkart. But right now, they are working together in Metaverse. If you earn some coins in Flipkart, that can be used in Amazon. And if you earn some points in Amazon, that can be used in Mintra. And if you earn some points in Mintra, that can be used in Ajio. So this is called, you know, uh, universal, you know, uh, system of doing business right now. In future, this will be the business. And you need to know all our data will be with all these technical giants. We are under the impression we are, you know, uh, governed by a particular party, you know, like uh, as we are in India, we are governed by a party called, you know, BJP, and we may govern by a party called Congress, but it is not so. There is a global governance which does this. It is called, you know, there are five companies which governs us globally. So Apple is the first company without Apple products, no one can live in the world. That is the, you know, the, the mantra they have. Apple introduced recently, they have introduced a water bottle. A water bottle will cost you 6,000 rupees because only for the reason it is made by Apple. That's it. They've introduced a watch, a smartwatch cost you 50,000 rupees because it is introduced by Apple. So Apple brand becomes a social status. So Apple is the first company to govern us. And then Microsoft. Without Microsoft, we can't even... Uh, you know, work out in a single day because our, you know, day-to-day -day office works starting from Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, everything is based on Microsoft. So we can't skip our life without Microsoft. The third company is Amazon. Amazon is the company which governs our day-to-day -day activities. What are the things you need to buy? What brand you need to buy? And, you know, what are the uh, things, you know, whether you like it or not, you are forced to buy because in Amazon, Big Billion Day and other, you know, some offers, whether we need the product or not, if it is offered at 80 percentage, we'll immediately purchase it and we'll think over whether we can use it or not. That is secondary. But immediately we'll be purchasing it under the impression that 80 percentage offer is there and the offer is for a limited period. So this is the next company, Amazon. And the third company is Google. Whatever we do, we use only the Google products, either to conduct a search or research or, you know, telecast your videos or look for any contents in the videos. By way of learning, whatever it may be, without YouTube, nothing works. And moreover, Google search engine is similar, a similar way. So without Google, we can't do anything. The third, the final company is Meta. Meta is there, as I stated earlier. It has so many products and starting from, you know, WhatsApp, Facebook, uh, you know, Instagram and threads and so on. So without the social media, no person can live right now. Even next generation can't live. They are completely addicted to this. It is not that whether it is useful for them or not. We are simply addicted to these kind of applications. So these five companies are governing us. What we need to do, how much we should spend, and how should be our day-to-day -day activity, at what time we should wake up, and what time we do, we should go to bed. So we are governed by these companies. This is the world which we are living in. And whatever I said, it's all happening in the surface net. Surface net is only 5%. So remaining 90% of the internet is called dark net. How many of you are aware of Darknet? 
How many of you are aware of .NET? .NET is another form of internet. So .NET is another form of internet. In .NET, you know, everything is happening, you know, uh, you, can, you can buy a product, you can sell a product, everything is happening in the .NET. So we can find a lot of criminal buzzers, similar to what we have discussed earlier, such as, you know, Amazon, Flipkart, Mintra, Ajio, and so on. Similar kind of criminal buzzers are available in the .NETs, that is available in the digital underworld. So in this criminal bazaar, all the illegal substances will be available, such as, you know, you know, cocaine, heroin, guns, ammunition, uh, even our credit card uh, data, debit card data, our bank accounts, even our other data, and your bank card details, everything is available in darknet. So cybercrime is offered as a service by these criminals. Cybercrime is offered as a service, there's no doubt. You can buy, you can sell, you can hire, or you can outsource. Everything can be done in the darknet. So the, what are the services offered by them? Specific hacking software, translation services, secure hosting, DDoS botnets, list of uh, targets for phishing schemes, access to critical systems, custom virus development, cheapest is batch of credit card and debit card numbers, as I stated earlier. See, normally uh, when we purchase something, you know, like in, in online, we'll be you know, using our card numbers. Physically, we will be holding a plastic card, but what they require is only the numbers, you know, 16 digit number, expiry date, and if you could turn back, is the CVV number. So how many of you notice that like wherever, you know, you make a purchase, you after entering the number, there will be a small, you know, column there below that it is called save the card for future purpose. By default, in most of the, uh, you know, payment gateway, it will be ticked, it will be marked as ticked, that's it. So if you could, if you, if you fail to, you know, untick that, your card number will be saved in that particular site. So for next usage, whenever you do, do some, you know, um, purchase in a particular, uh, website and through the particular payment gateway, your card number and uh, CVV, would, you know, expiry date, everything will be available. Only OTP is required and OTP will send to you. And accordingly, once you enter the OTP, the transactions will occur. These informations will be stolen by the criminals. It often happens to a lot of companies, but most of the companies don't reveal this incident and most of the medias don't blow up this incident as well. You know, like whenever you enter, you know, card information in any website, please ensure to untick that uh, save card for future uh, use so that your information will be safe. Otherwise, these information will be collected by the criminals and these information will be offered for sales in the dark market, as I said earlier. So you can raise a question that like, uh, you know, like uh, without OTP, how can they do transactions? They have a card number and other stuff, but without OTP, how can they do the transactions? Of course, OTP is required only if you do any transaction in Indian sites. If you do any transactions in websites located in other countries, OTP is not required. OTP is required only in India. For example, if you want to make a purchase in Amazon, if you want to purchase any products in Amazon.in, then it will demand for OTP. If you want to purchase any products in Amazon.com, it will never demand for OTP. So without OTP, transactions can be done. So beware of that. Don't save your card information anywhere else. And this dark market is a very good, very structured organization. They have a very structured organization. So it has an admin, it has a moderators, reviewers, hackers, data thieves, and members, and a lot more. These members are, you know, nothing but these members are in the, will be in the surface net. These members will be acting as an agent for this dark net criminal bazaars. Uh, in 2015, Oxford Dictionary has introduced a new term called frenemy. Frenemy means nothing but friend and enemy combination of friend and enemies, frenemy. And why they have coined this word frenemy is that based on the crimes happening in social media. For example, if you are uh, holding an account in Facebook or Instagram, wherever it may be, you must be having some, you know, like 1,000 friends or 2,000 friends. Out of the 1,000 or 2,000, only about 20% are personally known to you. At the max, 20% are personally known to you. Remaining 80% are nothing but friends, friends are mutual friends, common friends, or recommended friends by the social media. We never know who they are and what they are doing, but they will be in our friends list. So some of the criminals, you know, as I said, the members listed in the dark, dark uh, market will be our friends, will be there in our friends list. And what they will be doing is whatever the post we post, especially the photographs of women and girls, when they post some photographs over there, these photographs will be captured by these members. That's who are in our friends list. And they will transmit these photographs to dark market. So there are so many demands in dark market. 
for you know photograph of a girl or a woman why so because you can you may raise a question that i am not a model i am not a celebrity i am not a you know you know like a film actress uh, why there should be a demand for my photograph of course the demand is only for your photograph not for you know uh, film models or you know film actresses or you know celebrities because their photographs are already you know available in rampant in social medias as well as it available in huge level in all the surface net what they require is a fresh face for a fresh face can be obtained only through social media and there will be demand only for the fresh faces so these guys will capture your photographs and they will pass on this photographs to the dark market in the dark market criminal bazaars your photographs will be displayed for auction on an average an average looking girls photograph auctioned between 2 to 4 dollars the companies who spend 2 to 4 dollar to purchase your photograph will morph that particular photograph and they will sell this morph of photograph to pornographic sites because we don't watch pornographic sites we never know where where our photographs are posted in pornographic sites but it is for sure somewhere or the other if your photograph is posted in any social media and it will be reflected in some kind of pornographic sites as well because pornography is also similar kind of industry which is in, you know like well known in us and many part of the world so for them they need to get only the license of photographs so they will get this photographs only through these kind of dark markets and those photographs are licensed to them and accordingly they will use this photograph in their pornographic sites so this is our tapping because we are under the impression that uh, you know like i have posted my photograph in social media but have I, however i have done some settings where you can download my photographs there is no requirement to download your photographs the mobile phones and other gadgets that we are using are high resolution mobile phones a simple screenshot is more than enough a simple screenshot is more than enough to take your photograph and through that they will pass on to this kind of criminal bazaars and they do business so whatever activity we do in social media will have a impact in some other way in dark market but we'll never know so we will be victimized in those areas but we never know that we have been victimized because we never came across those pornographic sites so that's the reason we doesn't know like we have been victimized by these you know dark markets so apart from this lot of things we are doing you know like even uh, uh, you know uploading you know air tickets in social media just i got a ticket for you know malaysia or just i got a ticket for us and traveling and whatever the activities you do all these informations are being captured and collected by your friends friends in the sense you know your friends list and they will share this information with the dark market and moreover it is not so easy to identify the dark market or to capture the admin of the dark market so far you know the uh, fbi officers have done so many attempts in identifying the dark market and they could able to achieve only one you know admin you know they were, uh, whom they could able to you know uh, get hold of admin of a particular uh, dark market the name of the dark market is called silk road so silk road is a online criminal bazaar there is a very big platform which offers a cyber crime services around the world and the admin of that particular uh, website is called robert ulbridge so uh, robert ulbridge is also known as ross ulbridge and in dark market he was widely known as dread pirate dread pirate is the nickname given to him and he does all kinds of you know uh, criminal activities with the, the help of a website called silk road and an fbi officer undercover officer he, he himself you know acted as a member of the particular joined as a member of a particular silk road website and he was an undercover officer for more than 3 years and he could able to identify the admin and finally admin was arrested and the particular uh, you know website was taken down by the fbi but subsequently once he was released he started you know another kind of you know website a similar kind of dark market now he is a billionaire and sorry now he is a trillionaire so he owns trillions of money but no police officers in any of the you know investigation officers across the globe could able to identify him if you want to identify him then you need to have a valid evidence it's not so easy to you know capture the evidence that he has does in so and so and so what so that is the reason so once a thing goes to the dark market it is it will be there permanently the digital footprint is permanent whatever you post in social media will be reflecting on the dark market and this digital footprint is permanent it is not so easy to remove it so this is about the founder Russell Bridge created a, a Silk Road as an online criminal bazaar. The site's uh, anonymity was maintained by using Thor browsers. It's not so easy to, you know, enter into these kind of websites. Uh, we can use only in a Thor browsers to enter into because why they use adopt a Thor browsers? It has the on-in routers, multiple kinds of routers. It's not so easy to identify the IP address of a particular browser. So that's the reason they use Thor Thor browser. And moreover, 
this site was the first site to use bitcoins for all their transactions bitcoin in the sense all virtual currencies now we call it as cryptocurrencies these cover cryptocurrencies were used for transactions and that is the reason the fbi officer couldn't be able to identify him and more or track his transactions so this website was taken down by fbi in september 2013 and similarly there was another case uh, his name is you know like uh, renugan subramanian uh, he was widely known as jilsi uh, in uh, dark market he collected all the you know credit card details from all the you know uh, bankers as well as the whatever the card you stored in, in as i said earlier in the uh, you know uh, online e-commerce sites these informations will be uh, stolen by him and this information will be placed there for auction in Uh, dark markets so he was identified by the uh, police officers from uk and uh, scotland and they were arrested in i think the, the part of england and part of scotland uh, both the police officers worked together and they could able to identify him and he was arrested in london and his website was taken down so so for this you know like uh, we, you can raise a question like why could we could able to we couldn't able to identify these kind of criminals and we could uh, get hold of him and we can solve this issue because because whatever you know you do we need a evidence we need a valid evidence it is not so easy to identify easy to identify evidence or to collect the evidence from the dark market and that is the reason these criminals are acting in in a wide a wide scale and moreover it is not so easy to identify them so this is with respect to them you know like dark markets that's happening around us and moreover in today's world as we as said here earlier whatever the activities we do it will reflect on our life so for example right now we are using you know so many gadgets such as you know alexa amazon alexa or google home and so many gadgets and it is being connected to you know our wifi system and through wifi system it's been connected to all our you know uh, lights uh, fan and the ac everything so you are putting all your eggs in a single basket and if a hacker wants to hack in uh, hack into your home You can simply access your, you know, any one of the gadgets. It may be your mobile phone, or it may be your laptop, or it may be your Alexa. If you could be able to gain access into any one of the system, you can take control of your entire house. So we are speaking about IoT, but think about this kind of scenarios. If this happens, then everyone will be in trouble. So whenever you see some technology across the globe, don't be admired by its fantasy. Think over whether we need that technology or not. whether it is mandatory for us to use that technology don't adopt any technology for fantasy because it may result in some point or the other way it may result in you know a uh, very big danger as well so you need to think over twice because i'll tell you another story we back in 2015 uh, a person was uh, driving a car named jeep chrysler he was driving in a motorway in us uh, suddenly uh, you know like he lost his control he lost his car's control he was sitting in the driver seat but he lost the control of the car uh steering was not within his control brakes were not within his control an accelerator were not within his control and the the the, could, the car could able to uh, move in a zigzag way and then uh he could able to control the car at some point of time and he suddenly stopped the car after that he immediately called the customer care services of the jeep chrysler company and immediately the company came uh, the, the people from the company came there and they took the vehicle and they were in, you know investigating everything and they could able to identify everything is in a proper condition why this could able to uh, you know why this has happened they couldn't able to identify why this has happened and subsequently they were started inspecting you know their software system after inspecting the software system they get to know it was hacked and some hacker has played into it because hacker was sitting somewhere else and through his laptop he was you know uh, administering this person's car so through his uh, laptop he is controlling the steering through his laptop he is controlling the you know accelerator and the brakes so this is what happened this was the first news uh, in the automobile industry a running car can be hacked so when this information was spread across the automobile industry automobile jails are called for a conference automobile jails, all the manufacturer automobile manufacturer were called for a conference and uh, you know an instruction was given to automobile manufacturers stating that before coming to the conference you you please try to hack your systems all your you know automobiles try to hack your automobiles and whether you can produce your reports whether your uh, automobile can be hacked or not all the participants of the conference had produced their report yes or our our vehicle can be hacked including boeing boeing is one of the biggest uh, you know aircraft manufacturer in the world they have submitted a report stating that yes boeing airplane can be hacked and if it is hacked think about the situation of the passengers traveling in it so 
there is no 100% full proof solution in this world when it comes to technology or when it comes to cyberspace so we may be under the impression that like we are using you know uh, you know uh, uh, antivirus softwares or we are using firewalls and uh, we have uh, created multi layers of firewalls so no one can hack into our systems criminals will always find a way to enter it there is no doubt there is no 100% full proof cyber security except one thing a simple logical thinking of a human being so a human being can definitely control this so whether we need to do that or not it's up, up to each and every human being don't rely on any technology don't you know rely on any technology and don't adopt any technology without knowing the technology or you know don't complete or, or you know don't completely you know uh, addict yourself into those kind of technology without knowing anything if you could enter into you may end up in different kind of you know danger so think about it twice uh, whether you need a particular technology or not uh thank you if you have any doubts i think we may we have you know 10 15 minutes more we can have a interaction if you have any doubts or clarifications i'm ready to answer that do you have any thank doubts thank you for uh, thank you for reminding us that it's a dark and scary world out there okay uh, really kartik kartik and sir excellent actually Uh, as manju correctly said it's not that we are new to dark web yes. correct but the kind of data points what you have shared yes. be with me being in the industry i am scared more than anybody now i am really looking at the people who does not know anything about it who becoming in you know, a victim of every day day before yesterday there was an article in times of india bangalore edition yes. a laid a guy lost around 92 lakhs of rupees where in you know through a lady where mm-hmm. that lady had said to become a friend of him in facebook mm-hmm. and then both decided to get married etc blah blah, blah. finally mm-hmm. it was totally what you said in that lines they couldn't yet, they are still finding out that person first mm-hmm. of all that whether it's a girl or boy you and me don't know impersonation yeah. correct identity yeah. theft and etc mm-hmm. super yeah. thank you very much really really yeah Uh, Kartik sir, there are some questions in the chat window. Would you like to go through it, or we will read for you? Sir, please read it out, sir. I'll try to answer it. Okay. There is a question from uh, Adupu. Okay. CVV cannot be captured by online transactions. CVV. Hmm. 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 Just it put that. It, it can be done. There are so many technologies to overcome that. Okay. So that can be done, sir. We have seen a lot of cases like that. Okay. but without cvv no transactions can be done and we have seen cases like uh, you know uh, our data was compromised you know uh, the 16 digit number expiry date and cv everything was compromised and uh, you know card will be with you like you will be holding the plastic card with you but transaction would have been done in some part of the country true 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 yes. there is uh, say even captcha also yes without uh, uh, filling up the captcha the transaction can go through is it not yes sir yes sir. I, I think how this uh, can happen is now the server is expecting some value okay whether it is a cvv or captcha okay now if you can actually cheat the server saying that whatever is being uh, uploaded is what you are expecting are you getting the idea yes Very sir true. the server has got a database in which the cvv number is there or the captcha is there okay so if the input matches that it will allow you to pass through right. now if through a technology i am just giving a kind of an asterisk input mm-hmm. and cheat the server to think that this is what you have to pick up okay. as okay. per your uh, reference point okay then okay. that is one way by which the server can be cheated okay this is my perception now how to write code for that i may not know but uh, i think that is a feasible way of uh, uh, cheating the cvv i don't know adepo can clarify if bankers have better security not to allow this <laughs> now we say yeah any online company if we have uh, it is supposed they should they are not supposed to capture cvv after the transaction authorization okay. correct but visa at least should have it now sir what is that sir 
visa visa or masters uh. somebody has to have a cbv uh, they have sir whoever, they whoever is this. authenticating whoever is authenticating must have a reference of the cbv okay and then they will have to match this cbv with the database that's it in for example we have got a call from say from canada bank Ah. Kendra Bank is authorized to our transaction. Correct. Kendra Bank have the CV with them. Correct. That's what I am saying. It is the query has to reach the Kendra Bank server, no? Sir, now, when we enter the CV, it will reach up to Kendra Bank and get authorized. Then only come back. But in between, any acquirer, space Indical Bank is acquirer, or any other bank is acquirer, they should not hold it. And with Visa, debit card, Mastercard, they cannot hold a CV. Okay. Only before, before no, no, no. passing the transaction, the payment gateways can do that. Before passing the transaction, somewhere CBB has to be authenticated, is it not? No, sir, not somewhere. Only the issuing bank. Navi, sir, are you trying to say that this CBB, what is available in Kandra Bank database, is going to be hacked, and then it is going I to say yes? No, I don't want to have to know CBB. Right. I will be only. You can CBB skip the process. process. Please yeah. imagine what your CVV you are expecting from the database to be this. Fill up dash dash dash. If I if program it like that, it will actually accept whatever value you give as the value it is expecting from the server. See, there is one part of the processing where it picks up the hash value of this from the server and it is having the hash value of the CVV as you have put. Now it has to match these two. Now Correct. the matching process, if I corrupt it, it will always give a positive over this thing. Whether it matches or not, I will say the uh, result should be matched. So, 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 Adupu, sir, is that possible to hack don't, that don't kind of another? How to write a code for that? But I think this is how this <laughs> sort of a thing can happen. Sir, see, when we enter CVV and part of our transaction, it will go through acquiring bank to visa to uh, uh, issuing bank, that is Canada bank. Agreed. In between, hacking may possible. Ultimately, but, it has to go to Canada bank now. Yes, sir. Okay, now I am I am compromising the Canada bank server. Then no, gone, no. Everything Correct. Open. Then possible. Then possible. Then no, possible. I, I, I say, I am only talking of theory. Okay, theoretically, this could be the way it can be done. If uh, Mr. Kartikeyan says, yes, these things are happening. CAPTCHA, we are already aware of. CAPTCHA reflection is already known. CVV reflection, I was not aware, but he says that he uh, is aware of such things. I am only saying that the same technology which is used in CAPTCHA reflection can also be used here. If anybody else who is a uh, technology-oriented persons like Anil and others uh, wants to add their thoughts, they can. Uh, they are welcome. Sir, uh, when we do PC assessment, the entire card, card data transaction, the four values, card number, name, expiry date, and CVV has to be encrypted with a strong encryption key, then to be passed up to the issue bank. That is the Canada Bank, what example I've taken it. In Canada Bank, something happens. Oh, okay. Then. Say, you just imagine you are the verifier. So you are the software, you are the verifier. You have to decrypt it and then verify, no? You are that not using homomorphic sir. encryption. So that what happens only in Canada Bank, sir, not in between. Canada Bank. I am saying somewhere if a compromise has happened, technically it is feasible, is what I am saying. Um, I hope uh, somebody can prove me wrong. They can uh, prove me wrong. Sir, I am only sir. talking of the theoretical sir, possibility. Sir, nothing to prove sir, wrong, it, sir. It is possible, sir, because we have seen a lot of cases. I will tell you another classic example as well, sir. Recently, we filed a case in adjudication office. Whereas 78 lakhs has been swindled by, from a particular person's account. His daily transaction limit is only 5 lakhs. But they, they could be able to crack it and they are able to transfer 78 lakhs from his account. Yes. Moreover, it is a particular bank where they, you know once you add a beneficiary, the cooling period is about 30 minutes. Right. After 30 minutes, you can transfer it. But when I could be able to verify those, uh, you know beneficiary, the adding time as well as the transaction time, everything yeah. was done within seconds. I understand. I understand. Yes. So they could be able to easily change any instructions given to the bank server. Yeah. So bankers are only claiming that their security is foolproof. 
it is actually not foolproof. Yes. That no, is what I, I have also seen Punjab National Bank server logs, which are not supposed to be the way it is supposed to happen. Okay. Um, so obviously there is a, a compromise somewhere. Um, bankers uh, publicly are only saying that it is not possible, but crimes are happening. So yes. if it is happening, then there must be some weakness somewhere. So it is like, just like, you know, uh, bringing down the two twin towers. <laughs> the correct, 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 correct. Uh, Karthik, sir, that yes, uh, you forget that you were once in Kerala Bank. I was also once in Indian Overseas Bank. Okay. Well, we are bankers, sir. <laughs> Basically, uh, at ground, you and me are the same banker still. I will work only with the banker mentality, sir. No, no, <laughs> I, I understand that security should be such that it should yes. not be possible. But if there are cases in which it has happened, I don't know how it might have happened. I am only giving one theoretical possibility. It may be there may be some other way in which it, it may be done also. Okay. Yeah, Anil, you have anything to say on this? Anil, sir. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I always believe technology is designed by human beings. So there are brains who can try and work around with the technology or try and break the technology. So whatever security you put in, there won't be 100% security. There will be people who will try to break it. But of course, I have not yet come across that somebody is uh, uh, recovered original text from a hash value because that's also a different technique. So these kind of techniques, if we can possibly use in uh, uh, these kind of communication, Yes, this could be a kind of unbreakable uh, situation. But uh, I don't really think uh, uh, in, in credit card transaction that is being used. Uh, so as Navi sir, you said, yes, technically it is visible, but how long it will take or which technology to be used? Yes, it is to be seen. Yeah, Anil, you can see like in recent times, a lot of insurance companies are offering uh, insurance for credit cards. If these kinds of uh, these types of crimes are not happening, why this insurance company should offer insurance for credit cards? Because crimes are happening and people are losing money, and there is a reason insurance companies are coming up with new types of schemes. You know, insurance for credit card, insurance for you know bank accounts, and a lot of things are coming up. Oh, fine. I think we'll leave that uh, discussion uh, here and we will see if any other questions are there. Anybody else? There is a question from Mr. Babraj. Uh, he's asking, uh, how do we know whether my credit card details are available in dark web? Is there any website or tools where you can check? No, it, it is. We can't able to identify that. It will be on a safer site. You please limit your, you know, uh, credit card limits, you know, like instead of having a limit of 2 lakhs or 5 lakhs, you can have a credit limit of 3,000 you can hold multiple cards. So even if one of the card has been compromised, you can use it with other cards. Don't have, you know, too much of limits. You know, having a 3 lakh card, credit, card, credit limits or 5 lakh credit limits. Sorry, I'm Kapalisharan here. Uh, in some banks are offering, you can have a multiple, you can have, set your own limit there. Even if you have, say, about 10 lakhs credit card limit, you can restrict it. Supposing you are on travel, you can restrict it to, say, 1 lakh or 50,000. And whenever you want, you can alter it. I think, I feel that is a better way of handling it. Is mandatory handling now. It. I think it is handling mandatory it. now for banks to have such uh, transactions. Correct. Correct. But but they are setting the default limit as a maximum. So it is for ah, the customers yeah. to yeah. is for the customers to go and set it as a minimum limit. So that has to be educated, and that where that is where the awareness also plays a part there. Correct. 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 Uh, most of the bank apps are giving the facility to set any time the limit by ourselves. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, Lime, you have got anything to say? No, sir, I just put one question that any case uh, study he can uh, share with us where victim has received the money. Ah, so, successful, successful litigation. Yeah, success story, success story. Of course, we got an order in last uh, last month as well, sir. I will share that with uh, Navi, sir, and he will share it with you. We record nearly 78 lakhs. 
good good now actually several cases have come only thing is uh, we have not uh, uh, say collected all the details bombay prashant mali has got a couple of cases yes. now kartikeyan has said even our own um, ranganath in bangalore he has got one uh, case so uh, uma shankar was the first one but there are many other cases now okay yes. both in td sat and uh, in other places yes. sir i have almost 1 crore from vodafone deposited in td sat mm. in last 5 or 6 cases yeah and 31st july is very crucial where all the cases are scheduled for final hearing so mm -hmm. hopefully on 31st uh, mr uh, chairperson of td sat hears that particular matter and decides Mm -hmm. so almost seven seven appeals are uh, this club together mm -hmm. and all will be heard together and uh, four are against vodafone mm -hmm. and uh, two are against i think uh, another service provider one is against bsnl likewise so all telecom service providers fighting yeah. collectively yeah sim card uh, this thing there are precedents yeah all sim there all sim cards there are already some precedents uh, there also no i think your own case may be there Uh, where yeah, that? but uh, that is that is what is the problem where Mumbai High Court is not taking up that particular matter, which is decided by T D S. Mm -hmm. So that is going on, and this I T Secretary Tamil Nadu has now started deferring the matter. It was scheduled uh, for 13th, then 14th, and now 20th. What reply you suggested? That will be on now 20th final hearing. Yeah. and uh, to add to what babu raj has asked see if somebody says that you can uh, enter your email name etc here to check whether your credit card has been compromised that itself may be a scam in fact it is done only to collect your information there may be another said say you put your credit card number then i will tell you whether it is there in the dark web or not that itself will be a scam so we should not respond to any such uh, services Uh, which says that you input your name or email address and then check whether uh, there is any uh, compromised uh, credit card or something like that check civil score is there those are all fake websites check yeah, civil in fact in, in civil itself there are number of cases where uh, uh, you have uh, false uh, claims made on uh, genuine people is it not yes sir so that is why limiting the transaction amount is the best this thing you make it as low as possible and whenever you want to do a transaction you go and open that and do it it is a little tedious you will be um, so normally i try to use uh, the prepaid cards wherever it is possible say but many of the service providers they don't uh, i mean they have not uh, Uh, provided uh, for acceptance of the prepaid card otherwise i will put only 2000 to 5000 rupees in the prepaid card and i will give that for the purpose of uh, online transaction but not all service providers have provided that so sometimes i have to use my bigger uh, card where this risk is uh, are there sir for that open a bank account with only 5000 rupees balance and use that debit card sir aha mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <clears throat> otherwise i am uh, using say dbs debit card only for this purpose i charge it with whatever amount is required and then uh, use it uh, for uh, online uh, prepaid payments wherever it is accepted but some debit cards are not accepted because technology people who have configured their websites they have not configured it for certain um, card numbers okay Mm -hmm. so even rupee cards many websites are not accepting that is all the fault of the configuration of the website so sir that particular web uh, commercial web company not been tied with a rupee card uh, brand visa mastercard any matter then just uh, rbi has to ensure that it, uh, all cards including prepaid cards as well as rupee cards are acceptable in all the websites okay no sir yeah. they have to uh, mandate that no see online merchants they cannot go to um, um, all the banks you know sir all the five brands they have choice to tie up with one bank 
thank you, Mr. Kartigain, for uh, an excellent uh, informative session. While it may not be possible to keep away from the gadgets and technology, this is a reminder for all of us to exercise sufficient caution and use it judiciously. And as privacy professional, it is our duty and responsibility to spread the awareness too. Thank you, uh, speaker, and thank you everyone for joining. Good night.